think. If you really think about it, sometimes we will tell ourselves, oh, I've got plenty of time. I'll just do this. I'll just um, do this tomorrow. Let's say tomorrow again. I'll, I'll take care of that tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and then you don't take care of it. And then you'll say, well, I'll get around to it sometime. But sometimes, you know, you don't ever get around to the things that you say you're going to get around to. And time, we live in a world where time is not going to wait for us. And time is not on our side. If you're fortunate, you'll be able to do the things you want to do with the time that you have been given. You will be. But the problem arises when we take time for granted. You take time for granted itself. Good morning. Um, hello, Dennis. Taking time for granted, um, taking life for granted, taking anything for granted without realizing that you're doing it, that's, it's kind of short-sighted. It is. Hello, Apple Brooks, honey. It's very short-sighted. We've been there. We've done that. We we put things off because we think we got all the time in the world. It's like planting your garden. Well, I'll plant that garden. I'm going to till the garden. And then I'm going to get those seeds planted. I'm going to put those plants in the garden. Just when it gets a little bit nicer out, I think I'll go out there and I'll till the garden. I'll, I'll, I'll dig the holes. I'll I'll put my plants, I'll go to the store, I'll get the plants, I'll put them in the holes, I'll plant my seeds. But then what happens if the conditions are not as ideal as you want and you're waiting for the ideal conditions to till your garden, to go outside and plant your plants. You're always too hot. I'm not going to go out there today. It's way too hot. I'll do it. I'll do it another. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it when it gets better. Well, what if it don't ever get better? What if the weather don't get as nice as you want it to get when you want to plant your garden? Well, um, if you keep waiting for the ideal, perfect, perfect conditions to do things, those ideal, perfect conditions may never come. And then the planting season, you'll look when it's time to harvest and you ain't even got your garden tilled. You don't even have your plants in the garden. You never planted your seeds and you have nothing there because you waited for the ideal times. I've done it before with a lower garden. I thought, I need to get that garden tilled. I'd like to put some stuff in there, but I'll do it later. Well, later later came, but I never did it. And I never did get the lower garden tilled. I didn't, and I never planted anything in it. Or like, I'll trim those trees. We'll trim those fruit trees. When the weather gets nice, when it's not so hot out or whatever, um, we'll trim it in the spring. Well, the spring comes. Well, I don't feel like doing it today. Well, it didn't get the trees trimmed because we put it off. Didn't make time to do it. Really, it's how it works. You don't you don't make time for it. Um, yeah, time waits for no one. Hello, I'm Susan B. Honey. How are you doing? Yeah, Apple Brooks Honey. Welcome, everyone. Um, this video is not about confusion. It isn't. Uh, confusion... God, God is not the author of confusion. If a person is confused, you might need to pray, meditate, go seek really good advice, and um, take time to just, yeah. Because no one should have to live in a state of confusion. It's very confusing if you live in a state of confusion. And um, if you wait for um, time, <laughs> when you wait for the right time, Timing's everything, though. Timing is everything. But then if you think about, there's a scripture in the Bible in the Ecclesiastes, or is it Proverbs? Like fish are caught in a cruel net, so men are trapped by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon them. You can't expect it. You can't plan for, like, things to happen. Oh, there's going to be an accident going to happen. I better plan for it. Now, you can't plan for accidents. They just happen like that. And um, if you think about time and chance, it happens to us all. We never know the exact timing things are going to happen in our life, and we don't know what chances are going to come our way in our life. 
But if we sit around and wait for the perfect timing and the perfect chancing, because we've already got it thought out in our mind that that time may never come and then your chance may pass you by. Really, Gina, what are you doing a video on a, um, time? We don't have all the time that we think we have. We don't. Time to do all the things that we want to do. And you know it. There's been plenty of times in your life. Everybody has it. When you want to do things, you like keep putting it off. It's like me in the basement. I want to get that basement straightened up. I'll tell you what I do. I go down in the basement. I, I put in a couple of days worth of really good cleaning up, straightening up. Really, it's just organization. And then it gets sidetracked. And there it sits. There it sets. I started on it, but I didn't get to finish it because I got sidetracked. Probably because I multitask or something, but I'd like to have it completely organized. Yeah, I just got to make the time. But then when you have your time being um, having to go, you have to um, do things with your time. You may be finding yourself going in one direction, then you have to go in another direction, but you're always doing. That's different. It's like, but I'm, the only example I can really give is um, like the lazy man. <laughs> They're too, a lazy man is too um, lazy to get their garden ready and plant their crops and stuff. And when it comes time for harvest, they, he looks and there's nothing there. That's what it says. There's nothing there. Nothing. Because there was no planting that was done. Nothing. So there is no produce. There is no harvesting. No nothing. Because the lazy man didn't do anything in the Bible. He didn't do anything. I don't know what happened with that lazy man in the Bible. They never did say why the... What happened? Did it get distracted? Did the person get distracted? Did Was the lazy man just waiting for tomorrow to come for the perfect conditions and things like that? And then it just didn't come? Perhaps. Yeah, I guess it's like the sluggard that turns on his bed. It just turns on his bed or the person who wants to eat, but they, they can't... <laughs> They put their, their hand in the dish, but they, they're too lazy to bring it back to their mouth. I don't know why they had those proverbs like that. I don't. Listen, if you're waiting for the perfect timing to do this or that, if you got in your mind, I already said it, this is how I want things to turn out. This is exactly what I'm waiting for, this certain chain event. This has to be like that. This has to be like that. This has to be like that before I do absolutely anything. Well, you may be waiting for eternity. <laughs> Um, you may, you, no, 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 no. Nothing's perfect. Nothing is perfect on this earth. There isn't. It's just time and chance. And um, it's like being in the right place at the right time. You can't really plan for things like that. I guess I was in the right place at the right time. That's right. It happened spontaneously and you didn't even have to plan for it. Uh, it's good to make plans. It's really good to make plans. It's good to make plans and follow through. But when you make plans and then you don't implement those plans, sometimes that means, um, well, time passed you by. It passed you by. Yeah. Time. We don't have as much time as we think we do. You may think you have all the time in the world to do this or that. You may not. It's like that short video. I did a short video. This is like, I don't know, 13 seconds. What was it called? Today is the tomorrow that you thought about yesterday. But then today... Yeah, today's the tomorrow that you thought about yesterday. But for some, tomorrow doesn't come. And then they find themselves looking back on yesterday thinking, well, shoot, shoot. And it's true. We're not promised another tomorrow. And that, that, is, that is very encompassing, if you think about it. You're not promised another tomorrow. You're not promised... Um, Another go around. 
You're not. None of us are. And um, you only get one chance on this earth. One chance to get it right in this lifetime. And I'm not talking about, oh, I'll make mistakes and whatever. No, you, you live once in this lifetime. Unless you have near-death experience, you go over there and you go to the other side and you think, oh, wow. And then you come back to this side, then it's like a second chance. Yeah. Oh, wow. I got some unfair. I got a lot of work to do. If you have a near-death experience, if you think about it like that, you're going to find out about it. You are. And you're going to think, wow, that's, that's all I needed to wake me up. A near-death experience. Something like that. You all know. You live once in this time around. And some people say, if I, I hope I learn everything I need to learn this time around on this time on earth. Because if not, I do not want to have to keep coming back and learning this same thing over and over until I get it right. I'm tired of coming back to this earth. <laughs> I'm tired of having to learn. Well, that's why you got to really um, make sure you get it right. Learn what you need to learn. Yeah, you all know time, time is not on our side. You, you don't have all the time in the world that you think you have. And if you're waiting for the... The perfect conditions, the exact per perfect conditions that you have in your mind, that perfect conditions may never show up. That's right. It's rare to have perfect days. It is. It's either too hot, too cold. The wind may be blowing a little bit too hard. It may not be blowing at all. The sun may be shining too bright. The sun may be behind clouds. Um... Yeah, there's all kinds of variables. No, don't put off till tomorrow what you can get done today. Don't put it off. Don't put your life on hold, more or less. Don't put your life on hold. Waiting and waiting and waiting. Don't do it. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your time that you've got here on this earth. If you've got things you want to do, do them. Because time's not going to wait for you. Time is, the clock is ticking. Time keeps on spinning. Keeps going. Time just keeps going. If you picture time as a, if time was a, you picture a big ruler and picture on that ruler a little bitty vehicle called time. And um, you're not in that vehicle. You're outside the vehicle on a big ruler and the car of time just keeps going down that ruler and you're standing there and you're watching those um, measurements the distance the different numbers the time keeps going and going you're still there it's not going to come back you might have to run after it try to catch up with it if you can catch up with it because it um that's what happens too we put things off to the last minute. Some people put things off to the last minute and they got to rush, 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 rush. I got to get it done. And then they get themselves all worked up. I got to get it done. I don't have much time. Well, no, you don't have much time because you put things off to the last minute. There are people who live their life like that. If you give them a deadline, they're not going to get it done ahead of time. It's going to be the day of the deadline down to the very minute of the deadline. They will wait till they have no other choice except to do it right there. Because then, then they know, i got to get it done. There's no choice. I have got to get it done. But they will put it off and put it off and put it off till the very last moment. There's people that I used to work with like that. If you're a person that... <laughs> doesn't like to wait to the last minute and you're working with people who are just waiting to the last minute okay you're did you know that your project is due you've got to get your end of the project done because it's due now they wait to the last minute and then they dump it on you they dump it on you and you have this much time to get it out because of someone else waiting to the last minute no um no no Hello, Michelle, honey. Hello. A lot is going on. All night into today, peace be with you. Yes. I see our moderators are busy. Susan B, honey, and Apple B, honey. Thank you. Yeah, you all. Time's not going to wait for anyone. It isn't. And you can't always wait for the ideal conditions. 
Because look around at the world that we live in. It's less ideal today <laughs> than it was yesterday. It is. Sometimes tomorrows are not as bright as today's. Sometimes tomorrows will be full of rain, pop-up showers that you weren't anticipating. Whereas today, it is, it's, feels like the day. It feels like the day. I think I'm going to do it today. Just like that. No, you all, just do what you want to do. Do it. Get the things done you want to get done. Don't put things off. Don't just keep saying, I'll, just, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. That's called procrastination. And there is, life is full of people who procrastinate. And the workplace is plumb full of them. Plumb full of procrastinators. Have you ever noticed in a workplace, you have one or two people that do the majority of the work while the others are slackers. They are slackers. And they know that that one or two persons will do the work and that's why they slack. And they know that they won't get any repercussions from not doing the work for some strange reason. It's people take advantage they take advantage of the system. They do, even in the workplace. Why are you talking about work? It just popped into my mind right now. It did. That's right. Um, 40 days is fast approaching. Approaching. You're in a boat. You're not good. Good news or health, but I can't get anyone to help me do anything. Um, with no one to collapsing the lower lungs. Oh, my goodness gracious. But I've had had enough of people putting off later, honey. I hear you. I hear you. I do. Yeah. Oh, wow. And if you're in a situation where you have to depend on other people, say you need to, you need to go to the grocery and you don't got a vehicle and you have to call people to ask them, could you please take me to the grocery store? And they tell you, well, I'll do, I'll be over there and they don't show up. And you call someone else, well, I can't do it either. And then you had to depend on people, but then you find out that the people that you have to depend on are not so dependable. That happens a lot if you're if you're um, homebound, if you're vehicleless or stuff, and you rely on people taking your doctor's appointments and things like that, oh, it happens a lot. It's hard to find people who will be there for you. It is. No, it's um, it's not easy. It's not if you're in that boat. It's not. Yeah, find it in the workplace too. Find it in the workplace. I'll help you with that project. I sure will. And you wait. And you wait. They got an excuse. And they waited to the last minute. They waited till the deadline came. But she's going to help me. Well, I had things to do. But you said she's going to help. Things like that. Um, yeah, um, it's hard. It's hard. You all time is not, you don't have as much time as you think. And, um, don't wait for the perfect conditions because the perfect conditions may never come. You gotta, you gotta seize the opportunity of life. You gotta take the bull by the horns. <laughs> that's what you got to do. You got to get in the, the driver's seat and go. You go. You got you to gotta make yourself do things at times. And that's hard when you aren't motivated. And that's uh, another reason why people put things off. I'm not motivated to do it. I don't feel like doing anything. And that is a very serious thing that's going around in the world. People are losing their motivation. And it's 
like your motivation is being sucked out of you. This is really a big, big problem with a lot of people. I don't feel motivated to do anything. I want to. I have the desire to do it, but I cannot motivate myself. My body doesn't want to do it. My mind doesn't want to do it. I cannot get myself to get up off this couch. I cannot make myself do it. I feel like I'm just sitting there and I, I need somebody to help me do it. That is a big issue. Lack of motivation. And it I think it's it's more widespread than anybody realizes. Why is it looked like that's red up there for some strange reason? Yeah, it's uh it's widespread. Uh sometimes um you may have to pray for motivation. I've had to do that a lot. Not recently, but in the years past, I would have to pray for motivation to do things because it's like the motivation was not there. I wanted to do it. I really wanted to do it, but I just, something is, wouldn't let me do it until I prayed and I thought, I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. Um, yes, we need peace for your son, Kimberly, honey, and no patience and show love. That's right. Yeah. Um what um something was entering my mind when I was saying that, you all. If you if you're lacking it, if you're lacking the motivation, you sometimes have to pray for it. If you're a praying person, prayer does work as long as you believe and you got the faith to believe it does work. Sometimes you have to say, Get behind me, Satan. I'm doing this. And you are not going to suck my energy out of me because it's really like a just pitch of Satan as a big dark energy sucker. Sucking your life force out of you. A big dark entity, a big dark energy. The energy is like an energy vampire. Oh, she's got energy. I think I'm going to go over here and get a refill on her. Oh, he's got energy. They look all happy and bubbly. Let me come over here and get some of that happy and bubbliness. Let me have some for myself because I can't I can't get it for myself. I'll just take it from people. The energy and their life essence, that's what happens in the spiritual realm. They suck all your energy. They, <laughs> <laughs> you ever find yourself in a really, really, really good mood? You are you are piping hot. You're so happy. You're so upbeat and you get around one individual. And you start talking. You may talk for around an hour. It may not even take an hour. It may take 15 to 20 minutes. But what they can do within that 15 and 20 minutes, by the time you think you ain't got no energy left, you ain't got no motivation, you feel horrible. But they're very happy. Oh, they love it. They're in such a good mood. Thank you for it. Thank you. It was so nice talking to you. And you're sitting there thinking, wow. I got to recharge now. I got to recharge. That drained me so much. It happened. It's an energy drain. It's your your life essence. My husband said he has this thing he wears on his uh, wrist. It's like a, was it like a Fitbit thing? He was telling me last night, you know, my watch said that, um, whatever that thing is, you're low on energy. You need to rest. I said, how's it know you're low on energy? He said, I don't know, but it told me that I needed to rest now. He needed a rest. I said, wow. It knew. <laughs> it saw that he was drained of his energy somehow. Yeah. Um, Lack of discipline, not a human on the planet going to be motivated to do the right. Not every human is going to be motivated to do the right thing every single day like exercise. It can be your love. Doesn't mean you're stoked to do it every day. That's true. That is true. Um, time's not going to wait for everyone. It's not. And we're talking about a lot of extreme instances here also. A lot. And um, it's just the motivation. The motivation gets sucked out of you at times, and you you got to take those times to recharge, recharge, and rethink. You got to make time for yourself, too, but 
after you get yourself fixed, then you get back at it again. It's like working a 40 hour work week or a 60 hour work week or 80, some people do that. It wears your body out. It wears your body out and you need some downtime. Yeah, but you know, when you put in all those hours, time's not gonna wait for you. And you do what you gotta do, you do. If you decided, I don't think I'm gonna go to work today, Truly, if you were expected to clock in every single day of your life, and if you were expected to move your body and do certain things, regardless of whether you had a full-time job or not, if it was required of you, even just moving your body, walking around, and um, you didn't do it, could you imagine your Fitbit hollering at you? Uh, you need to get up and you need to exercise. Uh, you need to get up and you need to drink this amount of water. Uh, it's time for you to eat. You need to eat. You have not exercised enough. You need to get up and you need to exercise. Could you imagine having to... that? I mean, that could come in the future too. They may have the technology in the future that literally will have control over your mind and your body. Why does this feel like I got red up there? Um, that has the mind, has control over your mind and body. It'll fix those people. It'll fix you if you're one who just sits there, I don't want to do nothing, and you have, you have something telling you you need to get up. Or, I'm sorry, you are, not, you've already watched your quota of hours of TV. You've already been on your phone longer than you should have. You will no longer have access to this phone. And you now you have to do this and you have to put in the time that could you imagine that something having complete control of your life controlling your time for you could you imagine that in the future right now i know that on the phone they say turn on the screen time on your phone um so they can see what you do on the phone how much screen time have you been on your phone and they'll probably say, well, this was how your screen time, if you got that app on here, or I don't know how they do it. Um, they're measuring what you do with your time. How would you like to have your cell phone? And, you know, if you like to scroll on your phone and do stuff on your phone all the time, you're always playing games and stuff. And in the near future, your phone's saying, I'm sorry, you used up all your allotted time. You will have to wait six hours from now before you're allowed back on. It's like growing up when you say, well, you get to watch 30 minutes of TV. You can watch cartoons for two hours on Saturday. After that, TV's off. Something else controlling what you do with your time. And if you think about it, if you have something else controlling you, what you do with your time, telling you what to do and how to do it, how on earth did it come to that? Is it because maybe something out there said, we see these humans, they don't manage their time the way that they should. Some of them just don't do anything. So I think we're going to have to take control of their time and make sure they, they exercise, make sure they eat right, make sure they rest, make sure they do this and that. How would you like that? Well, I think a lot of people are going to see that in the future. I really do. Time's not on your side. It's not. Uh, but it boils down to it. You're in charge of what you do with your time. Um, there is a saying, my time is mine to do with what I want. That's absolutely right. My time is to do with it whatever I want. But that time that you take for granted, that's taking time for granted too. Sometimes that could be abusive of the time because you don't use your time wisely. But then in the future, you will not be able to say that because someone else will be deciding what you do with your time. It will. Hello. The freedom of my time is the most treasured asset. That's right. Use your time wisely and do not abuse your time that you have here on earth. Do not abuse it. Do not waste it. 
Don't waste your time that you have here on this earth to do things. Don't. Um, because you can't get it back. I can't even get back one minute from here. I can't. I can't go back and... I can't. There was a video. I'm going to just say this. There was a video. There was a movie. And I think we shared it up three or four years ago on this channel. In this movie, the people, they had tattoos on the, I, I did a video on it. They had tattoos on their forearm, and it was a digital clock. And they had to perform work in order to get hours to live. If they worked, they were able to add hours and time to their life. And that's how it was. And they could share, they could um, share some of the hours that they built up and the time that they built up to others, but you had to physically work in order to do that. You want to live, you got to work in the tattoo, digital tattoo with the, the thing on there. And um, I could see it happen. I really could see it happen. You saw that movie, Elizabeth, honey? What was the name of that movie? What was the name of that movie? Because I did a video on it showing that tattoo and stuff. Um, I've never seen it. We can lengthen or shorten our own days. That's true, Leda. That is absolutely right. Lengthen it or shorten it. Um, 111 is a very good number. Out of time. That's right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Out of time, you all. Just even just read the little um, thing about what that movie is about. Just just take a glimpse of it. Take a glimpse of it. The movies tell you what's happening. They give you clues about what the future holds because it's in the future and it's really futuristic. You have to ask yourself, how can it be futuristic? What do they say that the technology that we have like 60 or 70 years behind something like that watch that movie or look at what it's about it's not a joke it is not a joke you need to take your time here on earth seriously take your life seriously look at yourself seriously ask yourself am i wasting my life away am i wasting my time am i really making the best of it am i doing all that i can do to make the world a better place, to make my life better, to make other people's lives better? Am I doing Am I doing all the things that I, I should do with my time? Because I want to make the most of my time. Yeah. Only you can answer that. Only you can answer that. Yeah. Elizabeth, honey. Um, yeah. It is. Um, it wasn't the actor trying to save his save his mother before she died wow yeah mm -hmm. um it's out of time yeah if if you if you've lost a child or something i know it's hard it, losing a loved one is very very hard it's very sad it is, and it takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot of strength and courage just to even get up out of the bed, just to even eat. It does, and um, our prayers are with you. It's very, very difficult. And uh, it may be something that you never get over, even though you get up every day. It's still there in the back of your mind. It is. Um, there'll be other lifetimes, Melanie, honey. There is a, a school of thought that there are other lifetimes. But you don't want to have to make so many lifetimes to where it's really, really difficult. Yeah, you want to enjoy your time here on earth to the fullest you do. You don't want to waste it. Don't waste your time. Don't do it. You refuse to let your spirit go through any more in this dimension. Melanin, I think it's great. That's right. You got to stand up for your spirit. You let your spirit live. Live. Yeah. Yeah. It's more than just the body. It's more than just this physical body. It, it's so much more. It's like this, a crushed spirit who can bear. <laughs> it's really hard to bear, a crushed spirit. Uh, it's very difficult. Um, 
Yeah, you got to keep rising. Listen to melanin. You got to keep rising within your spirit, you all. You, you do, no matter what comes. Don't let it send you into a downward spiral. Keep rising within. That's where it counts. It's inside of you right here. And this world is going to do absolutely everything to break you. And you're going to have all these distractions coming at you. You're going to have movies. You're going to have any things you see here coming at you too. To keep you stuck. To keep you stuck. To where you can't rise up and be who you need to be in this world. No, you don't want to stagnate either. You don't. You don't. You went to the person on the inside of you, the spirit in this. Sometimes it's the little child on the inside of us that, right here, the little child, right there. Um, no, I, I'm, I am telling them. I am telling them. Don't waste your time on this earth. I better quit doing that. They didn't feel too hot. <laughs> they didn't feel too hot. I think I'm, I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> I'm not. Don't waste your time. Like this song, when I've sat in church, it said, don't you gamble on life with all your luck and your skill because you can't play the cards that death has to deal. Um, there was only two winning hands and they were nailed to the tree. Um, just climb up that mountain where, whatever. I can't remember all the words. No, don't gamble on your life. Don't do it. Don't take chances like that. Sometimes we take chances and it destroys our life. Don't do it. It's like taking things for granted. Um, life is, um, you're welcome, um, Melanin. Life is hard. It's a lot hard. Some people have been through very rough times their whole entire life. They have literally, their whole life has been very hard on them. And they have no one there. They have to go through the school of hard knocks all by themselves. They had to raise themselves. They had to fight for everything they got in this lifetime. Everything. And that's not everybody's lot in life. But for some, it is. And they're overcomers. They're overcomer, overcomers. They're very strong. And they still are able to keep the... Keep that best part of them right there. Right there. You see the love and the light shining through because they're overcomers. Yeah. <sighs> Risk takers. That's why most of us are here. That's absolutely right. You've got to be willing to take a risk. And I must have asked and begged the Federation. You got to take a risk, but you can't. If you sit around waiting for the perfect time, the right conditions, and all this to fall right into place, you're not a risk taker. You are not a risk taker. You're not. You're not. There's a flip side to it. Sometimes you got to take risks in life. I wholeheartedly agree. Sometimes you just have to say, no, I'm not going to sit around and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to wait because I'll be waiting forever. No, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, that's spontaneity. That's spontaneity, and you need it. You need it. Don't you be waiting, thinking you got all the time in the world. Um, Tammy, honey, don't ever transplant survivor right here, melanin, honey. Don't wait forever, and don't you give up. Yeah, it's called a data dump. They downloaded everything to use AI. Um, yeah. Your comments are really important on here, too, because a lot of you have good advice, which others can take in, that others need to hear, because you may, this may be the only good advice you get today. That's right. It may be. And not all the comments may um, apply to you, but uh, some of the comments may resonate with your spirit. And yes, I needed to hear that. I needed to see that. I needed to look at that. It's true. It is true. Uh, you're cool day by day. You only wanted to survive. You not only want to survive, but I want to thrive. Amen. You want to thrive. We all want to thrive. But we got to take the steps toward the thriving. We got we to gotta walk in that direction, spiritually speaking. 
I want to thrive. I don't just want to survive. No, you want to thrive. If you can thrive, so be it. You do it. Make it your best life. Make it. You'll know it. Yeah, I'm going to go. My words are about done. They are. I don't like that red mark right there. I've got on these one. This is my looking in a distance glasses. And these are the ones that um, I can put on here to help me see better. With these, my actual other reading like glasses that I got. Yeah, well. That's okay, you all. It is. Um, do it now before you lose the moment. Sunshine, I love it. I love it. You got to be able to do it. Do it now before you lose the moment. If you're thinking about doing something, you do it. You act on it right then and there. It's like now's the time. Now is the time. You know how many people who have felt the urge to do something good and they knew it? I, I, feel, I feel led that I should do this. And then they second guess themselves. And then the moment passes them by. That's so true. Thank you for putting that comment on there. They didn't even try to, oh, wow. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, Elizabeth, you never gave up. Yeah. Um, let me see. You missed my comment, Dave Dodge. There's a lot of comments coming on here. Sometimes I get to American young men need to listen to what you just said. You get up in the morning, hunt and you gather. Yeah, you just get up. Get it, live your life. Give it your all. You get out of life what you put into life. You do. You get out of life what you put into life. And then sometimes, you know, it don't always work that way. But the majority of the time, that's right. You put in the time and effort to till that garden. Plant those seeds, tend to those seeds, water them and stuff, nurture them. And when the harvest time comes, you got to choose some food to eat. You got to harvest because you put in the time. You made sure I'm going to nurture this. I'm going to make sure I take care of this garden. I want those... Um, I want those radishes. I want those tomatoes. I want those bell peppers. I want those onion. I want the green onions. I want the cabbage. I want the broccoli. I want the cauliflower. I want those strawberries. I want that okra. I'm going to keep a close eye on my garden. I'm going to tend to my garden. And I, because I want to be able to reap a good harvest. Yeah, one time in Maryland when we lived on Fort Meade, they had uh, lots that they gave the military families. If you wanted a garden, they had areas that they had away from the housing complex. You could go there. They supplied the water, the water holes, the garden tools, the fertilizer, everything you needed. They even supplied the plants. All you had to do is put forth the work. We had a garden over there that looked like it belonged in a Better Homes and Garden magazine. When those vegetables came up, it was the most beautiful garden I've ever planted. It was beautiful. And the military, they said, well, here, we give you everything you need. All you need to do is do it. Garden, you name it. They supplied everything. I remember planting our garden. We would take the kids over there. We'd tend to it. I had my one friend, God bless her soul. Um, she was gung-ho too. She got her garden ready and the plants started growing and she wasn't able to tend to it. <laughs> the weeds started popping up and stuff. But you all, yeah, you get out of life what you put in it. As with anything, you work hard at it. You don't, 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 don't be a slacker. You want something, you work for it. You put those intentions out there, those good intentions, and you work for it, work toward it. We're here for a reason. Digging holes of sadness, pity, and put me more behind on everything just to do something small to move forward. And um, you have to look at life, too. Sometimes bad things happen. Sometimes you go through things that you don't want to ever go through again. But had you not gone through them, you would not be the person you are today. You need to look at that and say, I'm very thankful 
that I went through what I went through. I'm very thankful that it happened, even though I, when I was going through it, I wasn't very thankful. I was very upset. You ought to be thankful if it made you into a better person. Be very thankful for the experience, for the pain, because you grew through it. And you're stronger than ever. Stronger than ever. You got to be thankful. Don't look back with regret. No. If it changed you for the better and made you a better person, be thankful. Because it had it not happened, you wouldn't be who you are today. You would not, some of you would not even be here. You wouldn't be here. That's right. I'm going to go, you all. And um, I think there is, um, we change reality every minute we hear. I think there's something to it. Cat, moon, star, rocks. Um, our decisions and everything we do, it does. It changes our reality, changes the outcomes in some instances. You know, that's pretty deep if you start looking into it. Um, deprogram yourself. I am no bitter. Yes. <sighs> I'm going to go with this right here. Um, oh, yes. I also play moderator. When I happen to look down at the exact moment, the exact second in time. Yeah, I do it. I do. Gratitudes go a long way. You're so very welcome, y'all. I'm going to go. And um, with that being said, hello. Wherever you are in any part of the world, hello from my heart to yours, love. You have a wonderful rest of your um, morning. And I will see you later on. And thank you for coming to this channel. If you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Thank you to everyone who has joined. Please give this video a thumbs up. And we got each other. We do. So this is all some people have is this uh, platform right here. And um, I'm very thankful for it. I am. And I know you all are too. It's a, it's a good way to connect. And it's really... It's used for good and not for bad. It is. It's used to build up and share and not to tear down. It's not. So it's great. We're using it in the manner in which it was supposed to be used, which is great. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, moderators. Thank you all again for your comments. They mean a lot and they do help out people, whether you realize it or not. Love you.